Okay, so this is about uh, use of other respiratory substrates. So um, I know that we've done respiration as starting off with glucose being made in glycolysis into pyruvate, going into the link reaction to make acetyl coenzyme A, just doing a bit of abbreviation there. And then going round Krebs cycle. And that is also called the tricarboxylic acid cycle. For reasons that probably make sense to a chemist. Um, <clears throat> so, obviously if you're, uh, you know, lacking a bit of glucose in your bloodstream, there's other sort of ways in which you can get glucose. So for us, uh, we could break down glycogen. If you're a plant, you can break down your starch reserves and they will all release glucose. And of course, where you get your glycogen and your starch from is from diet, uh, so, you know, you think about the staple food stuffs, they're all starchy stuff, aren't they, and wheat and what have you. And we break it down into glucose and make it back up into glycogen, so we've got our own stores. And, um, you know, if you, you're having lactose uh, in milk, you can break it down into galactose and glucose, bit of isomerization, make some glycogen out of the glucose you get. Um, the... Uh, you know, maltose the same, you can break it down into two glucoses, build it back up into glycogen um, and sucrose, you know, my favourite sugar, the sugar you put in your tea. Again, you know, make it into glucose and fructose, I summarise the fructose, make some glycogen. That's only going to get you so far. <clears throat> and once those sort of supplies are running out, you can then embark upon other stores. So obviously our, you know, another energy storage molecule that you learnt about in core is fat, or as I like to call it, I love the word lipid. Lipid, it sounds fatty and lipidy and adiposy. So you can break down fats and lipids, and of course plants do this as well. Remember that they're mainly producing unsaturated uh, fats and we call those oils and the first thing that needs to happen is a bit of digestion and out of that we're going to make glycerol and fatty acids and I'll just um, I'll look and see if I've got Byron. I've got, oh, I've got a really glittery one look must have stolen that from somewhere. So glycerol, just a bit of a reminder here, a bit of synoptic. Three carbons, three OH groups, everything else filled up with hydrogen. So, astonishingly, pyruvate and triose phosphate in the reactions of glycolysis have three carbons, so glycerol kind of goes in there. <clears throat> Once it's in, it can get converted to pyruvate, it can then, you know, do the decarboxylation, get um, oxidised by NAD and dehydrogenase enzymes into acetyl coenzyme A, and trundle around the reactions of Krebs cycle, releasing all of that hydrogen into the electron transport chain. Fatty acids, again, a bit of a reminder about fatty acid structure. Oh, we're covering all the bases today. Uh, carboxylic group at one end, acid group, and then big long chain of carbons, saturated all filled up, unsaturated double bonds. So you've got some unsaturated have some carbon to carbon double bonds or carbon to carbon triple bonds. <coughs> now these are really really long and uh, probably the shortest fatty acid is about 18 carbons long 
and they undergo a process called beta oxidation. So remember you've got three fatty acids for each molecule of fat and they're going to get chopped down those long carbon hydrogen chains they're going to get chopped down by beta oxidation into two carbon fragments and surprisingly acetyl we remember has two carbons so these are beta oxidation into two carbon fragments So, those two carbon fragments <coughs> can all then enter Krebs cycle and each two carbon fragment will then result in uh, three reduced NAD and an FAD and a, a rogue ATP from substrate level phosphorylation. The consequence of that is, is that per gram That releases more ATP and it actually works out as to about double that of carbohydrate. Presumably there are less molecules of fat in a gram of fat than there are of sugars. So, <clears throat> they're releasing more ATP and they also produce more water. And the reason for that is that all the hydrogen gets reduced, oh sorry, gets oxidised. into the water. And remember the electron transport chains where you're releasing most of your energy. So this water is called uh, metabolic water because you have made it through the reactions of metabolism or respiration. Oh, I've written metabolism. Metabolic mm, water. Getting giddy now under respiration. And then of course <coughs> We have other things that we can respire. So our major sort of groups of biological molecules, it's all, it's all synoptic this isn't it? We've got carbohydrates, we've got fats and of course if you run out of fat, it's not likely in my case. <laughs> when Dr Savile runs out of fat, which is imminent, <laughs> he's going to embark upon his proteins. I can't say that this is a good idea. So. Proteins tend to be a bit of a last resort because where are you going to get your proteins from? You're going to have to start um, digesting your plasma proteins and your muscle, including your heart muscle, and this really isn't a very good idea. I mean, I could shed some fat, but I'm quite anxious to hang on to my protein. So, protein again. We're going to digest those into amino acids. And just again little bit of synoptic, get my glittery pen out, remind you about the structure of an amino acid. So central carbon, carboxylic acid group, hydrogen, amino group and our variable R group. <coughs> so what happens to the amino acids is that they get deaminated What that means is we remove the amino group, so that process is deamination. It makes ammonia, ammonia really, really toxic, so it depends what organism you're in. I mean, if you're a fish, that's not too much of an issue. I can't think why a fish would be starving, but if it was, break down its muscle myotomes. Myotomes is a good word as well, isn't it? You can look that one up. Um, you can make it into urea, in the liver, send it off to your kidneys, 
if you're a reptile or a bird you can, or an insect, you can make it into uh, uric acid. <coughs> what you get left with then is, is this bit of the molecule, which then um, gets to be a keto acid. And the keto acids all enter somewhere around Krebs cycle. Obviously you've got to deal with the R group because the different keto acids will have different R groups. Um, and effectively it's kind of going to go in over here somewhere. And then it's going to make whatever it can make from there onwards. Uh, which is not going to be as efficient as our lovely fat, fat yielding most energy. This isn't going to be yielding as much, but they'll enter the reactions of Krebs cycle. Um, I think kind of that's all I can say about it. Yep, don't know anything else.